This is Jackie with TheCuttingEdgeCulture.com. I'm here with Jerry Roush from Glass Cloud. And uh, let's start from the beginning. This is the first band that you have been, that you have built from the ground up. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of control over. Yes. How does it feel to have control over your own band for pretty much the first time in a long time? Uh, it's really, really cool as opposed to, uh, you know, filling in or you know, whatever you want to call it, for other bands, or trying to fill shoes, it's, um, nobody can say that I'm, I'm doing the songs wrong, which is the biggest thing, because other bands, I played older songs, and people were like, you're doing it the wrong way, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not on, you know, thank you, I'm not, uh, like, here to do someone else's job, you know, so that's kind of like, cool, I have all to say, and the music is music that I really like, as opposed to that I'm getting paid to do. It's not a job, it's more of like a passion now, so that's cool for me. Oh, good. You guys have been touring for months, even before you released even an, even a single, and you've released... I wouldn't say months, but yeah. Well, for... okay. I'll, I'll take about the criticism. Half, about, a, about a half a month. Maybe. Okay. It's collectively. But even still, you haven't released a full-length CD. You will in July. July 3rd. July 3rd. Uh, what do you attribute to your band's early su success? Um, I was in a couple other bands. Um, my guitarist was in a uh, was in a band before him. Um, I was I was already signed to Equal Vision Records when I started this band, so it was kind of like a reverse band in the sense that I started it and I already had the fans and the management and the label and the you know the the whole crew of people working with me start a band but I didn't have the songs or you know music or, or anything like that so um it's cool that I, I had like my own little type of following and so does my guitarist so when we came together kids were like oh this is gonna be cool you know so like that's the only thing that really contributes it otherwise we would just been a band that no one's ever literally heard of and you know if you're nobody then you gotta start from the ground up build a foundation I think me and my guitarist already put in like our work with that to where like people are like want to see us perform so um, that's solely why it was because of previous projects that I've been in. And you guys are currently on tour as well as making several stops and festivals. Uh, we talked very very briefly in Texas and you're about to head up to Massachusetts. What's the benefit of doing festivals and what's the benefit of doing smaller tours? Um, the smaller tours are cool because they kind of reach to every um, like market and the the big fests are cool because a lot of people go and there's a lot of bands so it's good to um say there's 30 bands playing and only two of them were bands that you really dig on you never heard of us because we're a brand new band you might walk by our set and you know you might like it a lot and then all of a sudden we have a new fan so it's it's good to play in front of a lot of people to you know if nobody knows that what your music sounds like then why would they like you so you kind of have to play in front of them prove to them that you're not just a name and you can bring it just as well as you know every other band. All right, so let's be honest. We've talked. Uh, this is our technically our third interview. Online and offline, people either love you or hate you. Yep. How do you stay positive? Um, I've never ever once um like took criticism and like got down on it. I've never. I don't care. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. And that's just how the world works, um, you know? A hater's job is to hate, so might as well let them hate. You know, they're not gonna stop because if I say, hey, you know, I'm not doing, no, you have it wrong, just yes. Yes. do it. I'm not gonna sit here and get butthurt about it. You know, I'm gonna live my life, continue on. I, 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 I like um, try to play play with it, kind of like laugh laugh at the joke with them. Cool, man, you think that's cool, tight? Make them look <laughs> stupid, really. I mean, I don't care. I'm not gonna, like I said, it's like I've never taken someone like hating on me and gotten like down on myself. Like I said, people are gonna, and they're entitled to their opinion, they're gonna do it. I'm not gonna be able to ever change that. That's how they are. Some people don't have lives, so they just live vicariously through the band scene world, I guess. And I'm just not one of those fake dudes. I'm real, I'll say what I feel, and if you don't like it, then sorry, you know? Like, I can't please everybody. And there's a lot of ridiculous stuff out there. What's the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard about yourself? Um, that, well, I mean, it's not really ridiculous, but kids are saying that I should have stayed in Tesseract, which I don't sing for at all. I see the connection. A good friend of mine, Elliot Coleman, sings for Tesseract. He joined Sky's Airplane after I quit, 
to do bass and vocals, so I don't see it. Also, the Roosh Roush thing. My last name is pronounced Roush. <laughs> if you don't, I guess, know the English language very well, then you might read it as Roosh. It gets a bit redundant, but, you know, what can I do? Like I said, everybody's ignorant in their own ways, I guess, and, you know, ignorance is bliss, and you can talk shit about me, call me Jerry, do all you want. The joke physically doesn't make any sense, but that's fine. Get your five seconds of fame on Twitter, call me a, call me a douche. Had 12 people retweet it, and then there you go. Your week is made. All because of me. You said my last name wrong. Cool. Someone who listens to either the song titles or the lyrics of uh, some Glass Cloud songs might think that they have a little reflection of the past. How accurate is that? Um, I mean, it's, you know, like, there, it's about certain situations, but, set, but then again, it's about writing songs that relate to people, you know, like, um... We would never like say specific um, like times and instances. We would, you know, kind of metaphorically say them so people can kind of grasp. You don't want to sing a song, but that's directly towards one person where nobody can relate. You'd want to, you know, say it in a more vague way so everybody can kind of relate. So then they can transcribe that into their daily life. And it's kind of how I think good songs are written. And Glass Cloud is a unique mix of the heavy and the melodic. What attributes to that? Um, I mean, we all, all of our, like, influences are c crazy different stuff, and, um, I, I was a big fan of Danza, which my guitarist was in, Josh Travis, and, um, but I also like to sing, so I wanted to do some Danza-type stuff with singing. It's kind of like Sky's Airplane, just with the fact that it's a lot heavier, and a lot more melodic. I didn't want to do the typical cookie-cutter, breakdown, sing, screamy, screamo stuff that a lot of the bands, um, are, you know, like... A lot of the bands on certain labels or certain management teams go to the same dude to record and they sound the exact same. And you can you can tell that when you listen to a band. I don't have to know their name, but I can tell you that's, I can pretty much sum them up from listening to it. I didn't want to be like that, you know? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, I mean, we all listen to like a lot of really heavy and really melodic stuff. From like jazz to like Deftones, to, like Circus Revive to like hip hop, you know? It's like, so we just kind of write songs that we think are cool, you know? Some songs don't make the album, and it's just how it goes. Some songs we really dig on. Some songs I think are the best, and they're gonna kill it live, and kids are just like, they don't get it, and some are just like, this is so stupid, we should never play it. And kids love it. I don't know, it's all hit or miss, you know, really. Fair enough. In March, you released a, a two-track single and a video for White Flag. Uh, what's the benefit of releasing a video, uh, a lyric video? Um, it kids can learn the songs you know so we don't have our, al our albums not out yet so kids can come to the show and they know the lyrics to at least one of the tracks you know and so the lyric video is cool um, some people listen some people listen to songs and really want to read the lyrics some people don't care they want to hear just the melody everybody's different it was just um, we needed something you know all right are we I couldn't I can't release the album yet and so we needed to do something and we had you know the go-ahead to release that song so I said let's do a lyric video and uh, it's really boring and really um, monotonous of a video. It's actually really stupid. I hate it, but you know, got a lot of plays. So I mean, it's it could have been cooler, but we were working with minimal stuff. We had no live footage. We have no any footage at all. We were we, that we released that before we ever played a show. So it's like kind of just gave it to the the dude, and he made some lyrics to it. And that was that, you know. Uh, any plans to make another video? Yeah, we want to do one for Counting Sheep. Um, we plan on doing it from having on our first run. We did a bunch of fests, and we had a dude. Um, it came out and did some filmography stuff, and uh, so we're planning on doing like a kind of a live footage version of a lyric video. But um, I mean, there's so much going on right now that I mean, that's another thing to do. So you know, we'll, we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the benefit of doing a video in 2012 when there are no TV stations that actually legitimately uh, online? Play them? You can watch them all online, YouTube, different blogs. People can post them up all over. I mean. Nobody really watches like TV, I guess, anymore. I don't watch MTV, at least, and, and to watch music videos. I mean, but you can, if you want to watch it, you can go watch it online. Go to YouTube, go to, you know, whatever blog that it's being blasted on, whatever music website it is. Go to Cutting Edge Culture, you know, and it'll be on there, you know? And uh, so, I mean, those websites are, co are cool because they kind of just, like today we released that, we're on Screaming Like You Mean It this summer. A lot of, you know, Absolute Punk, Lamb Go, all those people were blasting that, so it's, good in that aspect that everybody wants to have the news and so you just give them a video they can also blast that too so it's like all the new media which is the internet um, you know it re really helps out you know so and like we said it was announced today that uh, Royal Thousand mm -hmm. comes out on July 3rd yep. uh, any 
Can you re can you relate anything to the meaning behind the title of the whole album? Um, it's actually a name that my my bassist Travis made up a while back. Um, when we were going for band names, like our name Blast Loud is pretty stupid. It makes no sense. But um, we just wanted something, and uh, the real thousand. This is I don't know. We wanted something that like people can kind of feel like they're a part of something, you know? Like, you can be a part of the Royal Thousand if you're on our team, you know? I don't want people to pick sides, but, you know, be with us, be on our team, you know, and be a part of the Royal Thousand. You know, that's not capping it off at a thousand, it's just like a name to put on it, you know? How many tracks are on the disc? Um, there is 10, 10, 10 songs. And I, I was gonna ask what comes up next, but I know what comes up next for Glass Cloud, and that's screaming like you mean it. Actually, we have um, a couple weeks off, and then we do a little, um, r like a run out to Bakersfield for Rock and Roots Festival. That's that starts right before the um, the um, Stream Like You Mean It tour. So we like play a couple random shows out there, like through Texas and like Albuquerque and Arizona, and then we hit. Bakersfield, play the fast, and then we drive back home from Bakersfield, Virginia, and then we start um, streaming like you mean it in the summer. All right, so Glass Cloud's very busy this year in 2012. Yep.